Okay, so I'm gonna present uh, uh, a proposal that started uh, in a prior biohackathon working with Dindong. And the project is uh, in the context of the work I did in my last position in, in uh, my postdoc at Scripps Research in California. And, and it was, uh, uh, it's, it started like, uh, it started uh, um, uh, in the context of supporting and working in collaboration with women experts um, in the context of hypothesis generation on a specific rare disease um, uh, called NGLA1 deficiency. And it's not very focused on social media mining, so I did my best to try to connect <laughs> the, pro the proposal to the focus of the plan. <laughs> So, uh, NGLA1 deficiency, um, it's a um, genetic metabolic um, uh, disorder that it's diagnosed to less than 100 um, patients currently, and there is no treatment um, right now. So, it's a, it's a rare disease. Uh, it has several definitions, uh, rare diseases in the U.S., uh, a rare disease is a disease that is uh, that it affects uh, one person uh, per two hundred and thousand uh, uh, persons. And as you can see, these our use case is a neutral rare disease. Um, rare diseases are uh, mostly undiagnosed, and they they uh, mostly don't have treatment um, because are so rare that there is, no, uh, there is a lack of knowledge and data. Uh, also, um, mm, uh, they are based on small communities. That means that they have um, not a lot of resources, but they are very active on social media. So to try to engage and find new uh, possible potential um, uh, patients with these uh, rare diseases. So in fact, I, I found uh, there is a starting also to, uh, to uh, be in the, in, in the scientific um, publications, uh, work on mining um, social media or oriented in, in, the, in, in research on rare diseases. So m maybe there is potential here. <laughs> also, um, um, that, um, we don't know um, the causes of these rare diseases, but uh, the majority that we know are genetic and um, have inherited patterns. So, um, to try to gain new knowledge, to, to, to increase the understanding of, of the pathology of these rare diseases, um, um, hypothesis generation basically um, is around try to find links between uh, a, a gene. In, in our case, it's uh, uh, an enzyme. Uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, uh, a gene that encodes an enzyme that is called NGLA1 um, to phenotypes. So, and our goal uh, was to um, ha uh, um, support it, uh, this um, domain area experts, biologists, to um, find explanations based on evidence. So uh, the first question was how to mine relevant knowledge for this use case. Um, so where is the knowledge? Where, where should we search this knowledge? Uh, so as you, we all know, this knowledge is mainly in the literature. It's in free text. Also, we have uh, a lot of knowledge is already structured in databases, and importantly, a lot of knowledge is in domain experts, researchers, and patients. So um, the first thing on how to mine it um, to, um, um, to generate, to add, to generate this uh, new hypothesis is accessing this knowledge. So the primary source to access this knowledge, it's reviews, our reviews. Um, but reviews um, mainly are, um, uh, we found reviews as free text. 
So that's, that hinders the mining, the computational mining of, of these great resources, the reviews. So this is the problem that we faced. And why, why is it uh, significant? Um, red diseases affect, one, red disease affect a uh, few people, but globally, um, because there are right now um, um, recognized like 7,000 red diseases uh, uh, globally uh, is a real societal burden because it's estimated that affects in the US 30 million people. So, and only the 5% of these diseases have a fee, uh, FDA um, treatment. So, the value of this work is try to um, make, um, our goal was try to make uh, reviews uh, a valuable resource for um, hypothesis generation to get understanding, uh, to speed up the development of new treatments for these rare diseases, and also um, the knowledge get from rare diseases can be transferred to common diseases. So, technologically, uh, uh, our goal was to um, make a review um, uh, as a compu uh, turn into a compu computational resource uh, that is human but also computer accessible, um, that is actionable, um, knowledge resource for hypothesis generation in the case of the rare disease uh, case, that integrates, integrates different facts different facts that we need uh, to mine and try to find out new links, new, uh, new explanations, that allows collaboration, collaborative science, um, and that allows uh, this community input and contribution uh, to this resource to make hypothesis generation more efficient. So, um, um, uh, an existing solution uh, are um, the use of these knowledge graphs that are, um, are uh, very useful to integrate, represent, and mine knowledge for discovery. Um, but uh, in the case of, 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 of use them um, uh, uh, as, as um, to review uh, knowledge around a disease, a rare disease, the, uh, the existing uh, informatic um, um, resources uh, have several limitations. Uh, mm, the most important is that they have a um, um, different goal, uh, are, are built uh, for a different goal, like uh, re uh, domain centric review articles. Uh, they are not domain specific, usually. Oh my God. Uh, and they focus on, on, on few types, a few edges, type of edges in the graph. So um, our solution was to develop uh, these disease-centric knowledge graphs. Uh, we developed this NK1 deficiency knowledge, knowledge graph where the most important contribution was the curation part, but we also review uh, information relevant from different databases. Um, it was centric to the disease and the specific question, hy hypothesis of the researchers. Um, we structured like a knowledge as a knowledge graph, or as we call structured reviews, and we make an application to navigate and uh, contribute by the community to build this and uh, curate this uh, graph. Um, is based this uh, creation tool on Wikibase that it allows to make fair source um, the the graph fair at source, and it's community driven. So, and can be generalized to other um, rare diseases. So, but the limitation of our approach is that um, uh, we are not using the, the major component of knowledge, that is um, the literature. So, we need to annotate uh, text from uh, the literature in a user disease and research question centric way. So, our proposal is to mine PubMed and maybe discuss if it's um, reasonable to mine social media for that. Um, text mining. Mini, um, meeting user needs and to, uh, in order to add creation for, in the, um, for graph building. So the proposal is to use pop annotation that the, uh, the pop annotation ecosystem uses agile text mining approach um, that is useful for um, 
um, and proper to build customized uh, uh, annotation data sets. And it, it can be used to guide curation for this graph building. Also to use Wikibase uh, that help, uh, helps to um, build living knowledge graphs um, because it, they allow to add new manual annotations above other things. And <laughs> the goal of, uh, of our proposal is um, uh, to build this pop annotation uh, NCLA1 deficiency oriented uh, data set with different steps and with two possible um, connections to the, to the project using Wikibase as the evaluation uh, tool of the annotation uh, data set or using pop annotation to guide uh, to build this graph by, uh, by curation as in an uh, efficient way. So, um, importantly, very thank you to the organizers for uh, allowing me to, to be here and very excited and thank you.